live from Austin, Texas. It's the Cube, covering Dell EMC World 2016. Brought to you by Dell EMC. Now here are your hosts, Dave Vellante and Stu Miniman. Welcome back to Austin, everybody. This is day two of Dell EMC World 2016, and we're pleased to be here covering the transformation of Dell. Our first uh, Dell World was in 2012, and Dell was a public company, uh, largely comprised of uh, PC revenues, transforming the company slowly. And um, we are now seeing, witnessing the largest acquisition in the history of the computer industry, the $67 billion acquisition and merger of EMC. Michael Dell came on stage today, he was the keynote, keynote, top keynote speaker. Go big or go home was something he declared last year, he reiterated that this year, and then flowed through a series of non-product visions, but specifically around digital transformations and connected devices and how Dell EMC was planning to power uh, that next generation of IT, as well as the collection, the new federation uh, of companies, the Dell Technologies portfolio, which comprises seven companies, including Dell Classic, Dell EMC, uh, RSA, VMware, VirtuStream, SecureWorks, and several others. I'm probably missing a couple in there, I'm sure. Uh, but that portfolio that De Michael Dell claimed allows them to be nimble like a startup, but at the same time bring together a portfolio of services for its customers. The other thing that Michael underscored was he was there at the beginning, Dell was there, he talked about we, he never used the term uh, you know, I, but we, he said, were there at the beginning, democratizing technology for the masses and providing it to the middle classes. And uh, now we're entering the next generation, what we sometimes call the second machine age. Michael Dell talked about that in his terms, and Stu, I thought it was a very good presentation. No power edge, no laptop, you know, no storage. It was just a vision of the future, your thoughts? Yeah, definitely, Dave, and I, I felt there was that, that little touch of Jeremy, Jeremy Burton flash, uh, you know, when Michael Dell came out, the doors break on through to the other side, he actually came like, out of like, looked like a digital door in the screen, um, you know, some, some good emotion, I've seen Michael give a lot of key keynotes, and uh, you know, uh, this one, I, I think he, he's definitely engaged, he's energized, um, yeah, I, I like some of those higher level messages, uh, things like the, the internet of everything, how they're going to transform our culture, uh, reminds me of what, Dave, we, we've talked about, kind of, uh, an IBM type of uh, you know business impact type discussion, uh, rather than right you know let's talk about the next you know spin of the Intel chipset and you know what's happening there. Uh, you know been critical usually coming at a Dell show is you know it's like it's PCs and servers you know let let's hug our metal or something like that. This is you know the impact uh, on the world uh, on the individual uh, and uh, you know it, it, it was a good message. Overall. We heard we heard this morning this was the largest. Dell World, Dell, of course it's the first Dell EMC World, so of course it's the largest, but thinking about Dell World as the classic event, 8,000 people here from 87 countries, and then of course we heard, and I, you love this, the combination of Dell EMC, uh, Dell's number one in everything, uh, their leader in 20, Gartner Magic Quadrants, they've got 40,000 patents or patents pending, uh, they spend $4.5 billion annually in R&D, they've got 60,000 services professionals around the world. Uh, some other comments that came out is, it was interesting, Stu, and I tweeted this to note, Michael Dell's posture around public cloud and comparing that with Andy Jassy's. Michael basically, his narrative was, look, if you're a public cloud only company, you're not complete, essentially, is what he was saying. And of course, if you compare that to what Andy Jassy, I incorrectly tweeted Andy Jassy's handle, thank you for correcting that. Uh, but Andy Jassy's view is, Look, really, very few companies are going to own their own data centers in the future. Yes, there's, I, I guess he's sort of admitting that there's hybrid. He's somewhat capitulating uh, that there's hybrid, but it's really, to him anyway, and I think to Amazon, a stepping stone into the public cloud. So still, even though those two disparate visions are coming slightly together, I'd say the divide is still quite massive. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, neither, you know, Dell EMC nor Amazon, you know, really they don't want to be in, even, even Amazon doesn't want to be in the data center business itself. It's about the services they offer. Um, and, you know, we, we get uh, down on the arguments as to kind of how much, uh, you know, 
where is that boundary? How much do I own it? Uh, you know, David Floyer, our, our CTO, um, wrote a few years ago about kind of mega data centers, and even you know Amazon. Yes, they own some of their own data centers, but they also leverage uh, some others out there. Uh, the whole VMware on AWS, a lot of that is just getting the customer out of that data center business. Uh, and you know, Dave, that's a discussion we've been having at Wikibon for many years: is to what should the customer get out of? Um, there's very few companies in the world that are really good at making data centers. Everybody else should get out of it. Uh, David Goulden followed uh, Michael Dell on the, on the stage this morning, and he said 80% of people are still looking to buy kind of components. They want to buy storage, they want to buy servers. Uh, and, and my retort on that was like, well, um, that means 20% of you are on board with Converge, hyper-converged and cloud, and the rest of you need to get on board, um, because if you're, uh, they, they use the old Baker analogy of if you see all those pieces and you want to put that together, uh, that's probably not the most efficient way. Uh, you know, we had the conversation yesterday, Dave, talking about uh, you know, your, your ants making their own tomato sauce, and that's great to do sometimes, but that build versus buy, uh, we think that it, it's going to go much more on the you know, put together in solutions, especially in the enterprise space. We're going to shift that you know, operational uh, you know, dollars. More of it is going to go into platforms or to the vendor side, um, because much of what vendors are doing today is not something that they need to have expertise on, they need to have expertise on their business and where IT is an enabler uh, for things for their business. I was struck, quite surprised uh, yesterday when Chad Sakic was on, at the degree to which he was pounding the converged hammer, which by the way, I totally agree with you. You know, I mean, we were one of the first to forecast that. In fact, we were the first to forecast that. And we're quite aggressive in our forecast, more so than the current estimates that you see from the likes of Gartner and IDC. By the way, we were very aggressive on flash. You've, you've seen those guys increase their, their flash forecast. That past is not prologue. That doesn't mean we're necessarily right on converged infrastructure. But I think that, generally speaking, as organizations move toward this digital transformation, move to become data-driven, they just can't afford to do this, what we often refer to as non-differentiated heavy lifting. It just doesn't make sense. It doesn't add value to the business. I'm, uh, I'm reminded of Alan Nance, former CIO of Philips, when he was on theCUBE saying, you know, 80% of our infrastructure spend adds no value. Our CEO laid down an edict years ago that said we will stop doing that. And I think that other companies will follow. It's penguins in the iceberg and then everybody's going to jump into that. Uh, a couple of other things. Um, a lot of people have been talking about winners and losers, Stu, on the VMware AWS deal. I didn't see much talk about VirtuStream in the trade press as a, as a loser. You and I were talking about that off camera. It's like, okay, where does this leave VirtuStream? I was again struck by the commentary today on VirtuStream. You got a lot of love on stage, but, but let's talk about that. So essentially what I heard from Michael Dell, I wonder what your thoughts are, is we are going to compete with VirtuStream on the basis of SLAs and quality of service. Personally, I think that's a, 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 a tenuous value proposition that it will be short-lived. What are your thoughts? Yeah, Dave, absolutely. So, you know, VirtuStream's bread and butter is those mission-critical applications. I mean, their number one use case is SAP, and that's awesome, and they have, you know, a, a great customer base there, uh, and they have room for growth there. However, watch it what's happening in the public cloud space, and of course, uh, you know, we're seeing a lot more mission critical ending up in the public cloud space. And now if I can put VMware on Amazon, there's an alternative there. Um, if I can run it in a virtualized environment, I can now, I've now said IBM SoftLayer, yes. You know, you know, Amazon, yes. You know, what about Microsoft and Google? You know, those are there. So uh, it definitely does erode uh, kind of some of the opportunity for VirtuStream. And uh, I think the positioning still needs some work as to you know, where the value is for VirtuStream long stream. I am. Um... I think that's right, Stu, and I think in general, uh, uh, I'm reminded of VMware in the early days when Paul Moritz stood up in the you know, mid, to, mid part of 2000 and said, we will run, and Joe Tucci said the same thing, any workload, any application will run on VMware. And a lot of people pushed back on that and said, you know, we're skeptical. I think we were skeptical at the time too. You know, we're not always right at Wikibon. I think David Floyer was, was pushing at the same time you know, we, we also noted at the time that IBM mainframe achieved that, so we felt like it was possible, but we didn't think it was possible in the time frame in which VMware achieved it and, it, and it did. So I'm reminded of that now. You see Amazon saying something similar now. Of course, there is speed of light issues. Let's not forget about that, but, but nonetheless, Amazon is committed to being able to run any workload and any application 
at scale with high performance in the cloud. Yeah, absolutely, it, it's funny. They have uh, an event, uh, the, the closing keynote tonight is going to be one of those fun yet educational videos. It's the dark IT night. And the villain, I think, <laughs> is the evil bookseller. Um, and, you know, I get a little annoyed at that because I'm like, okay, we go back 10 years and say, oh, okay, Amazon's a bookseller. Uh, PC, uh, you know, Dell's a PC company, right? I mean, Dell's grown and changed a lot in the last 10 years, so is Amazon. I, I think it, you know, it demeans the audience to just kind of call them a bookseller and they're now a partner of the Dell Technologies family uh, through Amazon and they're a piece of a puzzle. So um, we need to have a good conversation as to you know, why workloads go in various places. Uh, the, you know, there was really good conversation uh, talking about some of the operational model. I know you sent a tweet out, Dave. We said cloud isn't a destination, it's an operational model. Something we've been saying that that shift there. So that's the conversation. I want to hear more about how Dell's creating software, how Dell's helping the operational model, how Dell um, you know, has a right and what pieces they have to kind of you know, put their arms around those workloads, whether they are on Dell gear or not, and what data centers they're in. We got to wrap it up, just really rapid fire some of the other things we heard today, that you will, have, you will live in a multi-cloud world was a statement that Michael Dell made. The cost of cybercrime, astounding, 2.1 trillion annually over the next five years, wow. Uh, and then, I thought I was struck as well by the references. We had uh, Jeffrey Immelt of GE, uh, Randall Stevenson, who's the CEO of AT&T, uh, 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 Marcy Clevorn, who's the CIO of Ford, whom we've interviewed. I was waiting for Jamie Dimon to drop. Jamie Dimon is a reference for Dell, but was not today. Uh, awesome logo slide, I thought, uh, that Michael Zell was standing in front of, one of the biggest I've ever seen. Uh, and then they did a, did a survey of 4,000 uh, executives. 45% of businesses fear they'll be obsolete within the next three to five years. 48% think their industry will change in unpredictable ways. Yeah, and I, Dave, I said the other 52% are deluding themselves. <laughs> right, 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 because it will change. <laughs> and then uh, Jeffrey Emelt said, you go to bed an industrial company, you wake up a software and analytics company. I thought it was a great quote. Uh, quote. And we'll close with Michael Dell's killer quote, which was world-class technology democratized, boom, <laughs> on stage. This is day two. We're here at Dell EMC World 2016. This is theCUBE, the worldwide leader in live tech coverage. We'll be right back.